here we are celebrating today the Feast of the Transfiguration again. You may recall just a few months ago we did this very thing. So it's kind of deja vu all over. Did we forget? Or did we not do it well enough? We have to do it all over again? No. One of those quirky things that happens with us prayer book people. You see, if you look at all of those instructions, very few of us do, it's kind of a one of those clerics do. And you follow the instructions at the beginning of the prayer book, you find that there are a list of days in the calendar that are feasts of the Lord of the Transfiguration. And the Feast of the Transfiguration is marked out on a particular day in the calendar, and it's August 6th. I can always remember, because that was my mother's birthday. She would have been 126 or something like that. Uh, anyway, um, the day that we normally celebrate the Transfiguration is the last Sunday of Epiphany Tide. It brackets the season of Epiphany. It is considered, when we celebrate it that way, the last of the manifestation, the last of the epiphanies of the Lord. No, the showing forth of God's self in the person of Jesus the Christ. And so this glorification, this wonderful visage that the disciples have of Jesus, his face glowing, his raiment being dazzlingly white. But you see, it's the context that changes it, because it's always the last Sunday of Epiphany, which means it's on the cusp of beginning Lent. And Lent is that season which gets us ready to meditate on that time where we're talking about the temptations of Jesus and the suffering and death of Jesus and Holy Week, and Good Friday, and of course, Easter. And so it's overshadowed by other things. And so for centuries, the church has always had this other feast that it pegs on a particular day. And those nerdy people like clerics, uh, we have this special day so that we have an opportunity to meditate on this particular event, the life of Jesus, in a particular way so that we don't get lost in this other context of the broader picture of Jesus' mystery in the history of salvation, suffering and death, but we can narrowly focus on some wonderful thing that was happening. We do it at other times, too. For those of us in a more high church tradition, we do that with Corpus Christi, for example. We know that we recall the institution of the Eucharist on Monday, Thursday, the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper. But we all know, too, what was happening then. It's overshadowed by the mysteries, again, of the Lord's death and resurrection, not ours, after that Last Supper with his disciples. In fact, the story that's told at the liturgy on Monday, Thursday doesn't really even focus on the bread and the wine and that marvelous sacrament and so we have another day. It's always the Thursday after Trinity Sunday that we recall the mystery and we meditate on that present sacrament. Here at St. Luke's, we do that in an even more narrow way. We, we do that with an even song, a special even celebration, in, in an even song in June, closest to the day of the feast that we celebrate. Now, we do that a lot. But nerdy as it is, we also know that a feast of the Lord, pegged on the calendar day, always takes 
precedence, another fancy word that we use over Sunday. So here it is, the 6th of August, the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord, a Feast of the Lord on a Sunday. So we took the Sunday liturgy and we jettisoned it, and here we are. So let's do what the prayer book tells us to do. Let's meditate for a moment on what this day is all about. Jesus goes up the mountainside, and he's praying, and he turns around, and his disciples are seeing him, and suddenly he doesn't look like the Jesus they're used to. His face is glowing. His clothes look like they've just been irradiated. His clothes are dazzlingly white. And they are seeing visions of other people. Moses. Elijah. Now, this morning at the o'clock service, when we use the other rite in the prayer book, we begin the liturgy the normal way, and then the second sentence that we use is one also familiar with. Hear what the Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. What we have here in front of us today is the first graphic novel. The first comic strip, as it were. We have a picture painted for us. For an illiterate society, we have that sentence writ large. Jesus teaching us for all eternity what the two great commandments are. Love God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. These are the two things on which hang all the law, Moses, and the prophets, Elijah. I believe one of the greatest contemporary teachers in the Old Testament, his name is Walter Brueggemann, the great teacher of the prophets. And his thesis, all through his, his teaching, is that all the prophets were called to do, every one of them, from Samuel from the very beginning all the way through to the end, is to call Israel back. Back to fidelity to the covenant that God made with Israel. But that covenant on Mount Sinai that we heard today in the first lesson, that as Moses ascended Mount Sinai and received the law from God, that formed for himself a people that was to be a light to the nation, to show the way that we are to live, that that's what the prophets were to do. That every time that Israel strayed from that way, they were to call Israel back into fidelity to God, to act justly, and to walk humbly with God. That message that we etch onto our hearts here at St. Luke's. But that was the core message of the prophets. And so it is that in this moment, on the mount, Jesus, just before he is to go back to Jerusalem, where he would suffer and die, is being reminded that this is his mission. To call not only Israel, but all humanity to that fundamental law. And he has been doing it ever since. And he's doing it to, for us. And that's what this day is for. Put up that that gel, as it were, that bit of a graphic novel, that scene for us, that we don't even have to be able to read. We can see it. Because those two things that Jesus 
knits together are not new. Love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength comes from Deuteronomy. It was part of the law. Love your neighbor as yourself comes from Leviticus. It was part of the law. Jesus puts them together. And he says, this is the fullness of the law. On it hang all the law and the prophets. It is the sum total of justice. It is both the vertical and the horizontal. It is the cross. It is what we are called to. And as Jesus was transfigured and transformed in front of his disciples, he is calling them to that fundamental reality and saying, this is what I am calling you to do. Come with me now. We will go to Jerusalem. And it is there because this is what Jesus was calling Israel forward. It is why he suffered and died. Why can we expect any less? Those who hear this message have two choices. They can follow or they can reject. We can follow, or we can reject. What is it that you will do? What do you see? Do you see Jesus? Do you see him glorified? Do you see Moses? Do you see Elijah? Do you see the law and the prophets? Do you see this fundamental reality. And will you follow? That's the question. There it is. Plain, simple, a vision. We can carry it anywhere we go. We don't need a book. We don't need a phone. We don't need a movie. We don't need anything. It's a picture we can carry in our head. This is our high call. Love God. Love our neighbor. Because it is everything. That's what will transfigure us. That's what will transform us. That's what will lead us to glory. Reject it and it will lead us nowhere. What do you want? That's what Jesus is asking today. Who are you? Are you Peter? The usual Peter? La, la, la. Oh, let's build a house. Three of us. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And even Luke makes fun of him. He didn't even know what he was saying. He got it eventually. We hear about it in the letter. Yeah, if we want to follow Jesus, we will get it eventually. So fret not. Take that first step. Take it today. Step out in faith. God's got you. God will hold you.